Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So just recently, just this week, one really good drama ended and everyone's talking about it. And that's Crash Landing on You with Sonia Jean and Hyun Bin. So I decided to make this video about my top 15 Korean dramas that I've ever watched. Okay, let's go. Alright, to be honest, I actually made a list for genre. So I have here like rom-com drama, like comedy dramas, and life-changing dramas, heavy dramas. But now I'm just going to talk about the top 15 dramas that really touched my heart or somehow touched my life. I felt like I had a connection with that drama. So number one on my list is Reply 1988. I'll be showing the picture here or maybe here. Yeah, Reply 1988 is a series actually. The first one is Reply 1997. Next was Reply 1994 and this is the last one, Reply 1988. So it's about the lives of five friends who grew up in the same town. And what I liked about this drama is that it did not focus on love but instead it focused on their family and friends which you cannot really find in a lot of dramas. Alright, so continuing the list of my top 15 or maybe 16 Korean dramas, number 2 will be Prison Playbook. So the creator of Reply 1988 is the same creator of Prison Playbook. So um, the main actor wasn't really famous and he's a, a bit old, like in his 30s, but his acting was really good. So the story went like um, he's a very famous baseball player, he's a celebrity, but someone attempted to rape his sister, I'm not sure if that was his sister, and then he, of course, he had to defend his sister, it was like he caught the person and then he hurt him so badly, but um, he was put behind the bars, he was in prison because of defending his sister and it's a little bit similar to miracle number no. seven miracle in cell number no. seven how the people inside the um, prison helped each other during the bad times so it was really touching i've watched it like two years ago or a year ago but i can still remember all right so number three on the list is because this is my first life. I'm actually re-watching it now and I don't usually re-watch dramas because I think there's too much dramas to watch so if I re-watch a drama it's a waste of time but now that I'm re-watching it it's so worth it because it's like it's my first time to watch it. I can feel all the emotions, all everything again. Okay the story is about a female who turned 30 years old. She graduated from the most prestigious university in Korea, which is Seoul University, but she's not living the dream that she had. And then it's mostly like failing in life, but the message is that we are all living this life for the first time, so how can we do it perfectly? Like, there's no cheat sheet there's no answer key how to live there's no manual in this life so it's okay to try and fail it's a very good um drama and you'll somehow relate to it especially if you're who in this age like 20s to 30s that you thought everything's gonna fall right in place at this age but it's not happening okay and number four is my mister so the main character here is was played by Ayu and I wasn't really a fan of Ayu until this drama. Well Scarlet Hartrio was showed first before my mister but her performance here was really different. And now that I'm talking about it, I'm feeling some goosebumps. So the story was about how miserable her life was and it's not really good to feel good when you see someone's life being miserable 
but I somehow felt grateful watching that drama. I'm sorry if you can hear the phone ringing. Again, I'm in the office. I don't have really long time to film. So, so going back to my mister, there's one line there that I really like. They kept on saying, and it's Amukoto Anida. Amukoto Anida. So it means this is nothing. Like whenever she's facing something really terrible, she just kept on saying, This is nothing. This is nothing. Alright, so number five on the list is Mr. Sunshine. This was actually shown on Netflix last year, and it's about Korean history that time when um, Japan, Japanese people colonized. Korea for a long time and they suffered a lot from the Japanese people. So it's the Joseon dynasty, it's the Joseon era and because of these dramas I was able to study, I had to study and learn about Joseon dynasty, Korea dynasty and the Korean history of course because I'm the kind of person who research while watching the drama. Okay, and number six on the list is Signal. This is a crime drama, but it also involves time travel. Like time traveling, like someone in the present was able to talk to a police in the past, and then they helped each other uh, solve crimes, and it's really, really good. I watched it quite late. Like, it's been shown two years or three years ago before I watched it. And number seven on the list is Chicago Typewriter. Um, this is also about Korean history, um, almost the same time with Mr. Sunshine. And I don't know, how can I explain, but it's really, really good. You should all watch it. Um, I think Korea is into dramas that show how the youth sacrificed their lives and fought for the freedom in the past. So the message of these dramas is to enjoy the freedom that youths have now because the youths in the past had to fight and suffer a lot to achieve this freedom. So I guess it's also like a call for youths not to turn a blind eye whenever there's an issue going on in their country. Okay, number eight is Kill Me, Heal Me. So this is about a person that has different personalities. So this one man has an old man personality, a baby personality, a woman personality, a teenager personality. So it discussed about mental illness and not a lot of dramas have the courage to talk about mental illness. and. When we say Korean dramas, they really research about the disease, about the illness before they portray it because Koreans are very sensitive when it comes to details. So, okay, going on. Number 10, Descendants of the Sun. I don't need to talk a lot about this because this became a very famous drama all around the world and the two main characters um, one, the female is a doctor and the second is a soldier. So they're both serving their countries and during this drama, I've thought about going back to school and studying medicine and to become a doctor to help sick people too. Really wake up the, the love for your country in your heart. It's like not to be selfish. We are now at number 11 and I know you will not notice this but I'm filming this during breaks like uh, there are breaks between these numbers all right so number 11 is missing I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly but this drama is about office life some people might find it boring because it just dealt about their office lives like from finding a job to having this very low kind of job and being a temporary employee and being not sure if you'll stay in the job that not treats you well. So yeah, it's the reality of most people now in our age that our lives just 
go around working every day, boring, not really fun. Uh, this drama won a lot of awards and I got curious about it even though it looked boring because they're all wearing white like office workers clothes yeah watch it okay and number 12 is W two worlds we also know we also all know this drama um, it's about Manu it's about a comic guy who became a real guy and it made everyone crazy because of theories there were episodes that yeah, I shouldn't spoil anything just watch it but because of this drama I became a very very real fan of Han Yeo Ju and Lee Jong Suk okay number 13 is Kai Castle this drama talks about how toxic the education in Korea is especially for of rich people and for poor people as well and I can relate to this because I've been teaching Koreans for about 10 years now and they always complain about how difficult it is to be a student in Korea number 14 is Scarlet Heart Rio this drama broke lots of hearts I don't know I think um, I got dehydrated crying while watching this drama so this is about 13 princess and one lucky girl and then killing and dying and because of this drama I spent nights studying about Korean history and also Chinese history because there's this drama also has a Chinese version and while searching for this drama, I found out, I mean, while researching the background of this drama, I found out about what dark was the lives of people, of kings in the past. Like, as young as 12 years old, they'll get married to people they don't know. And if they are not doing well as a king, like, or as a prince, like, their father will put them in a basket and let them die there without food and water so yeah korea has a dark past as well as our country like all countries have dark pasts okay we are now on number 14 i think yeah number 14 is crash landing on you so it just finished this week and that's why i made this video finally made this video i had the list for the longest time but i haven't had the time to film this because i don't think there's a lot of people that are interested about this okay crash landing on you is about the differences of south korea and north korea the lives in north korea and although they have this um disclaimer that it's just fiction and it's not real but I saw YouTubers commenting how consistent most of the things that were shown in the North Korea in this drama. And I never really thought that Hyun, Hyun Bin and Song Hyun Jin were handsome or beautiful. But in this drama, I really, really love them. Okay, and the last one is When the Camellia Blooms. This is Kong Yo Jin and Kang Ha -ryo. Kang Ha -ryo is my favorite. Really, really favorite. And it's about strangers helping each other during hard times. So this drama will make you feel warm. Okay, so that's all my top 15 Korean dramas. And if you still want to add something that really touched your heart, don't forget to leave that in the comment section so I can watch it, so we can watch it. So if you have any suggestions, just comment down below. Thank you for watching. Bye.